What's up everyone, it's Claudio here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the five things I wish I had known when I started racing. It's Thursdays with Claudio, let's go! <laughs> So most of these things I had heard before watching tons of YouTube videos before I ever lined up. So it wasn't new, but I wish I had internalized it. I wish I really truly knew the value of these things. And some of them are actually things that I didn't know at all. So let's get right into it. Starting with number one, the draft is real. It's totally a real thing that actually influences everything. It's a huge part of racing and it will make or break your race. Drafting is when you get behind uh, another rider and you get so close that the air resistance is way less, something like 30% less. So you're doing somewhere around 10 to 30, maybe 40% less work than the person in front of you. And if you're in a really big group right in the middle of it, it can feel like you're doing almost no work at all. Now, the thing about the draft is I, I heard all kinds of things about the draft. Uh, man, you got to draft. You got to be really good at it. You got to be efficient. But when I got out there my first few races, it was so scary to get six inches behind the person in front of me. Forget it. I wasn't even two feet behind them, okay? I was like miles behind because I was just so terrified of getting that close to the people around me. It's a huge thing that you have to learn. It's a skill that I'm still learning. I'm still terrified of, of going 30 miles an hour and just six inches from the person in front of me. But that is the best savings in Watts. You save so much power throughout the race and it does add up. The draft is real. All your efforts, every corner, every straightaway, you gotta save as much power because at the end of the race, it will all add up and you're either gonna have more strength and power at the end of the race or less than the people around you. So racing smart, and taking advantage of the draft is totally real. It took me, it took me so long. I got dropped 16 races in a row, my first 16 races, because I didn't know how to draft properly. That's how significant it was. And there were a lot of other factors, but this draft, man, we have to get on there. We have to get right behind the person in front of us. We have to trust that wheel. It's still really scary to me five years in. I'm still working on it, but let me tell you, the draft is real. Coming in at number two, FTP is only a part of the equation. When I started racing, I thought FTP was everything. You just get your FTP up and boom, you're gonna win the races. It can sort of be true, but it's only a part of the equation. Depending on the kind of races that you do, if you're doing criteriums, FTP is a very small part of your ability to survive the races. It does help you, and I'm gonna explain, but what matters in criteriums and shorter races is repeatability. The ability to go really hard, recover quickly, and then go hard again, recover quickly, go hard again. You know, this really spiky motion in your power output, and your heart rate, it's all about recovery and recovering quickly. I didn't have that at all because I was coming from triathlon, which was mostly about FTP and you know long sustained efforts. I thought that just training that would help me, but no way, I got dropped so many times. All these attacks that happened in the first lap, forget it, I was off the back immediately, the first few laps of a race. I didn't have that repeatability. So, FTP is gonna help you in some ways if you're a breakaway rider, if you'd like to go off the front. But for me, FTP, what it really got me was the ability to make more mistakes in a race. So I could cruise in the wind. I could not be as skilled in drafting but it really was not helpful at all. I was still tired at the end of the race. I couldn't sustain the repeated efforts because I just didn't train that part of it. So FTP is just a small part of the equation. Repeated efforts, ability to recover is a much bigger part, especially in criteriums. Number three, your bike matters way less than you think it does. My first road bike is this one right here, the Cannondale Super 6 Evo, carbon, disc brakes. It's, it's like massive, massive overkill for me. It's just more bike than I know what to do with. And it was my first bike. Still, I haven't taken advantage of its full capabilities. I thought that I needed to upgrade the handlebars. I needed to upgrade this and that. And it really, seriously, your bike is maybe like 10% of the whole thing. As long as you're under 20 pounds and you have brakes and you have gears that are appropriate for that race, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna lose a race because of your bike. You know, there are climbing races and these, uh, these extremes, but the kind of races that I do, criteriums and flat races and maybe a couple hills here and there, 
it's not going to matter if your bike is 16 pounds or 18 pounds or 19 pounds. Your fitness is going to matter way more. Your strategy, all these things. So bike, as long as it's within the acceptable realm of race bikes, it's going to be fine. Don't stress out too much about all the upgrades and paying so much money for the carbon. When you're starting out, your bike is not the limiting factor. Getting a bike fit, that may actually be a really big limiting factor, especially if you're new to cycling, you have to be comfortable. You're not necessarily ready for those really aggressive bike positions. You see them in the pros when people slam the handlebars and they get really aero. Those are hard to sustain for beginners. So be careful, get a bike fit. It's way more important than your actual bike. Before we get to the next one, I wanna thank everybody for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of this year. So let's make it happen. I'm so happy to make these videos for you. I've got so much content coming up. Let's make this happen. Thank you so much. Coming in at number four, technical skills are really important, especially in Criterium. When I started racing, I had no clue. I like jumped in. Okay, listen, I, I started cycling in summer of 2017. I immediately started racing spring of 2018, less than one year. In my first race, I hadn't even gone on a group ride. I had no skills. Now, I don't recommend this, but I'm kind of crazy and I didn't know anybody and didn't know anybody to do group rides with and the winter had just come, you know, so uh, I had limited options, but I just went out there. The first race, luckily, my first few races were big open fields, airfields, so it was a circuit race. It was not technical, but still, technical skills really make or break you in some of these races. Um, just turning like a wide circle with a bunch of people around you, that takes bike handling skills. If you don't have that down, it's gonna be really hard to have confidence riding in a group. Okay, those are the less technical races. Now, if you wanna do criteriums where you have you know 90 degree corners, forget it, you really need to have that dialed in. One year after I started racing, I did my first criterium. And boy, did I learn really fast that I needed to learn to, to turn my bike. I'm still five years in. I'm having real struggles with some of these races that are just really technical and learning how to handle my bike efficiently corner lean, especially corner when there are a lot of people around me. It takes massive skill. And this is what makes or breaks a lot of Criterium racers. It's not fitness, it's not strategy, it's pure bike handling skills. You start to see more consistency in the higher categories, the cat one, two, threes. In the four fives, it's all over the place. That's something that I wish I had worked on earlier a lot more so I could progress a lot faster. So, technical skills are gold. And the fifth and final thing that I wish I had known when I started racing is that confidence and strategy wins races. This was a huge realization at some point in the middle of my racing career when I realized that the people that win races, they want to win. They are confident. They go out there and they, they win. They literally say they're going to win and they win. They have tons of confidence and their mental game is really strong. They also study strategy and talk about it with people and really develop a strategic game. I've had so many experiences where I showed up to a race. I was not confident about my fitness. I really didn't want to be there. And I was off the back so quickly. I just didn't have that edge that you need to race. Other races, I showed up and I knew I was fit. I knew that my bike handling was more on point. I knew my strategy. I had a plan and I got really good results. When you're first starting out, you're basically just surviving. And so it's really hard to get a grasp on confidence and strategy when you're just trying to stay in a race the whole time. I wish I had started working on my confidence and strategy much earlier so that I could progress much faster in that area. Once I started to consider Consider those things, wow, it was a game changer for me. And thank you so much for watching this video. If there's anything that you wish you had known when you started racing, please leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. And feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post all my workouts and everything that I do on my Instagram stories at Claudio underscore Fierro. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.